people to come here. So sure. to start with, does anyone have any questions concerning uh, how they're hearing the message? Hmm. I'm only be willing to be of help a very small window, two or three minutes a day. I don't have any questions, but I was going to share a story related yeah. to something that you shared the other day. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'll do it now. Yeah. Time like the present. So, um, it's not a long story, is it? I'll, I'll try to make it succinct. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> it had to do with, uh, you shared your experience in surgery where you had a very, uh, if like euphoric experience during your leg surgery and, uh, like you're in, maybe it's sort of a, a halfway state between conscious and unconscious. I don't know, but it reminded me of when I had surgery two or three years ago, coming off the anesthesia. The funny thing was before going into surgery, let me back up to my, this Advaita teacher I hung out with a lot. He's always talking about how he never sleeps. And I he never wasn't sure what, it never <laughs> sleeps. So I was, you know, how literally do you take that? <laughs> uh, he really meant that consciousness, you know, never sleeps. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but he seemed to be claiming that he literally never slept, that his sleep had changed. And I wasn't sure how literally to take that. Anyway, so going into surgery, I was a little concerned because I thought, man, I, I hung out with this teacher for eight years. Am I going to start to be too aware while, while they're <laughs> while I'm under surgery? under anesthesia and they're going to have to give me extra anesthesia because I'm going to be extra awake. So that's the funny part of the story. Mm. So anyway, it, it showed to me that there's no gap in consciousness. I mean, it's, you know, you're, you go under anesthesia and then you're, you're awake, you're coming out of it. There's, there's no memory of anything. But it doesn't show that there's a gap in consciousness. It just shows there's no memory. Anyway, what was interesting was coming back, it was like, this is how I interpret it anyway. It's like coming, you begin to become conscious, to become conscious or aware of a body or some kind of, you know, concrete experience. And the interesting thing was I could hear voices like, a couple of nurses or something and they're talking one of them's talking about a beach like trying to persuade the other one how nice this beach was and it was kind of like the impression i got was it's all love and these beings think they're separate from the love and they're like trying to get it somehow they don't realize their love but they're trying to get it somehow through this interaction i was in such a like a like a blissful euphoric state of just, you know, being the all as it were. And, and you're hearing people kind of how people are doing this thing in this world. That's, that's the experience I had. And then coming down and the nurse is like, you know, uh, Mr. Platt, or can you hear my voice? Or, I'm like, Oh, wow, that was trippy. <laughs> you know, and there's this, this beautiful nurse there. And anyway, your experience reminded me of that because it was mm. like a like a metaphysical metaphysical experience coming coming back from being supposedly unconscious into like this physical realm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But the thing you said, the uh people don't realize their love. Yes? Yeah. It's but that which doesn't realize their love isn't you. See, this is the beauty of it. Isn't the personal you? No. So, because if someone says oh, they don't realize that they're loved, then we're going to try to teach those people that they're not people to realize there's love. Do you see that fundamental little flaw, F-L-A-W, in inviting? So here's the state. The state of you is in place, and you are not accessing or, or conscious of the love 
Yeah. So we're going to change that access, but not questioning the you in a sense. It's now we're going to now the you is going to do stuff to become able to access the love. This is not this message. This message yeah. is you, the you that can't. That's what I was, was going to say. I don't know what. Hmm? I don't know what what word. I mean, it's just a memory, and I don't know that there's anything that can be done with it. You know, it's it's. Wow. Except share it in a group like this. So I'm just using <laughs> what you said just to get that one point across because mm -hmm. it's an important point where people come to a recognition that let's say there's love, but they don't seem to be accessing it. Or you see other people see. that are not accessing the love. And then what's the next move to access the love? But the person is still there. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why they're not accessing the love because love isn't separate from where they are. It's not in another room and they don't have access to it. And someone's going to give them a lock to open the door and they'll access the love. No, it's because of the you they're not accessing the love. Not the you needs to do something to access it. It's because of the idea of you is the lack of access to the love. Yeah, because instead of that consciousness being conscious of that, it's being conscious or focused on a self-consciousness, which makes you ignorant of the fact of what you are. So basically, it's always trying to work on me or get this better and da, 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 da. Well, it's not like you can't access it. You're not that you that can't access it. That's the beauty yeah. of it. So when yeah, you look just in the idea of you, these things that you look, you were trying to find a metaphysical ancient key to a labyrinth type door. No, you feel love or you feel empty, let's say more in this where I sit. Yeah, there's an emptiness of it. And there's no. Uh, you aren't the requirement or the condition for that condition to be available. You're, the condition that we are is always available. And from there, you there's a negation of this other condition that's playing a role of, you know, I'm going to check in what condition my condition is in. Yes. And it goes on and on and on. So this is a, it's a great, what you shared is great because it lets you emphasize that. There seems to be people who aren't accessing love. Yeah. Now, very rarely does the mind go to maybe there's not a person. It usually goes to I've got to access love. Yeah. Right. It isn't to go back to the root. It goes it goes back to an attribute that it wants to get or lose. Yeah. It's just am, a, I, am I or a me. There's like a it's a uh, a prejudice look this way. That's the head thwarting your ability to see and turning into a form of looking, which is the blindness to you as the seeing, you know? This is this is a very clear point, I feel. And this is why the story about the lion and the sheep, we always go over. That was the first video we ever did because it made such an impact. Uh, ends in the Indian parable of the young lion who was mistaking itself to be a sheep because it lived in a sheep world and it had lost its mother that would have reminded him or her that it was a lion. And so it had been taking itself to be the sheep, not losing the sense of being a lion, but having no sense of being a lion. So the lion was there, but it was living as if it was a sheep. And then a uh, older lion jumps, comes into the savanna and looks at the rest of the sheep to eat them, eat one of them. And then he's, it's really perplexed when it sees this other lion running with the sheep. So it veers off and tackles the younger lion and just doesn't say a damn thing as the younger lion goes, oh, Mr. Sheep, Mr. Lion, please don't eat me. I'm just a humble sheep. Now, the old lion is very clear that it's a lion. But the young lion seems not to be. So he drags it to the water hole, sticks it, both their heads over, and the young lion sees the reflection and gets it. Yeah, It wasn't like a long journey because it, it's a lion. It's, it's, this isn't about one giant obstacle and then a gargantuan Herculean 
fucking odyssey you have to go through. No, it's seeing you're not the obstacle. It's not removing obstacles. It's seeing you're not the main obstacle, which is this act of being identified as the sheep, let's say. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is, so when that happens in the parable, it ends when the young lion saw the old lion in his image and there it went. But that doesn't work here because the movement of the head to claim everything before you know it. Yeah. So something's happening so fast, just like you may have been mindful for 28 hours and every second. And then suddenly you can't find your car and you think someone stole it immediately. Something gets before the mindfulness because it's an act and there's a giant amount of space in a second of time for a lot of shenanigans to happen and they happen. And the beautiful thing is they happen mechanically. You are not doing it. You are not the doer of it. Yeah, this is one of the big things that happened with me because I could see when you get a whack the fucking old entrails of the identification just drag along with you until you notice, wait a minute, like fucking eight octopus fucking things with suckers sucking into everything. And then you, what, wait, I'm not that, I'm not that. Yeah, and it gets cleaned up. But when you feel like you've un been untethered, you're usually still locked in. Yeah, because the head has placed itself to be the one who was untethered. It claims it so quickly. It claims its own absence as a verification of its presence, really. It does. And it's not volitional. And this is why I met, I've met a lot of people, because we're inherently awake, no doubt about it. That's the basis. And they've had some incredible free samples, but because something that they unknowingly or subtly were identified as it, didn't respond to, they responded to like the love of all loves. The head's not getting it. The head's got its little story and it's running its story. Yeah. And then the love for all love will be based on, oh, five foot eight blondes, 108 pounds. You know, the love will be compartmentalized. It just goes like this fucking all the time. And so what happens is they have had a recognition that they're awake. But there's an assumption that all of them should respond to that. But all of them is not any of them. All of them is mechanical spacesuit action figure activities. And it does, they don't get the message. They're programmed for something else. They're not programmed for 11 dimensional fucking transcendence. They're programmed to see everything as how it pertains to you, the you that you're not. It's mechanical. So a lot of people have this and then the next day they get mad at someone and they disqualify themselves because they had a concept. Oh, if this, if I'm, but you already are awake and you've acted like a huge asshole tons of time. <laughs> yeah. Some of them act like a bigger asshole. Yeah. Seriously. This is what surprises people. You know, somebody sends me a thing. I did a, retreat once with him uh so hey guys he sends there's some seats here and some of these seats they he uh he sent me a a thing on uh facebook and it was like this famous tibetan teacher and everyone uh in that world he's an enlightened person yes and everyone like this and then as he got older this enlightened teacher he entered dementia yeah, and now he's drooling and he's putting his robe on backwards and they're like completely perplexed because they believe the thing was enlightened and now the thing doesn't look like it's enlightened. It looks like it's got dementia. But it, there wasn't a thing who had enlightenment and there's not a thing that has the dementia. It's an expression as a thing, yeah? But you're not a thing to begin with, nor to end with. So this is what I find is the warning about what happens in the head to the recognition of awakeness, basically. Because when the head, when the, when the cat's out of the bag, the head goes into a fucking new mode, yeah? Which it has to just keep you 
looking straight ahead through its little self-centered tunnel. Yeah. Because it 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 will sign up to becoming awake. It does not want the recognition you are awake. Because it takes a, its whole methodology of reinforcing itself is through time and being the doer and the thinker and the feeler. And if the seeker is actually the sort, that job through the seeking as a seeker is seen to be fucking pointless. Yes, because you are what you're looking for. It doesn't say you are what you're looking for only on Tuesdays and Sundays or after you fulfill 80 requirements. There's no requirements. It's an observation. You are what's your, what you're looking for. What's looking is what you're looking for. Yeah. Why is it blind to it? Because what's looking is seeing and the head is using the seeing to look. The awareness that is that is expressed through looking is the same awareness of the seeing but the awareness being expressed as looking is a blindness to the seeing so when you're looking for the awareness aka as the awareness you're blind to the awareness it's one of the fundamental uh, warnings they give you they basically say there's a presupposing yeah, now, Amelia and I have assumed and supposed a lot of stores were opened without calling them up and then drive and get there and find out they're closed. And we're thinking, is there a holiday? And then we walk to the door. There's usually their hours and the hours. There's no stores never open on Saturday. So you would think you would learn, but you go back the same thing. Hey, maybe we should call. No, let's go. I know it's over. and you go. So there's a presupposing <laughs> in this case of a non-existent thing. Guess what the non-existent thing is? The body, yeah? If you've had the experience of seeing someone that you were calling the body and seeing that body you were calling Fred dead, you probably had a big hit, the body was an Uncle Fred. Yeah, you didn't have to go to class or study. It was sort of like, a, what? Because you were assuming, because you're assuming this is you, you were assuming that F Uncle Fred's body was Fred. And when the Freddiness of it all had seemed to have been e evacuated, it was obviously, it was a non-existent thing. Still a thing, non-existent. Everyone thinks it has to be existent. There's got to be an existent for a thing. No, a thing is not existing. And it actually, in another way, in the dreaming, we're dreaming of things and they're not existing. And the great godfather of non-duality, Ravana Maharshi, said quite a lot of times, the body is appearing in the mind, big M mind. It's an appearance. So this dreaming is appearances of things. So there isn't an existent thing, first of all. And they're all non-existent as things. Yeah, they are not a thing in and of itself that's existing. They're existing because they're not a thing. Yeah, so the spirit or whatever that is, is causing that non-existent thing to seem to be existing, at least from our point of view. But the thing is not existing. But existence can appear as a non-existent thing. Hmm? Yeah doesn't matter you don't have to get anything it's just a sense it's a feeling so but the timing is important so there's a presupposing uh 15 20 <laughs> i can do commerce with the uh, selling the loaves and the wine and the bread right? no, no. so so the non-existent thing the non-existent thing is now being presupposed to be an existent thing. So this is where the head starts. And it doesn't want to see that there's anything before that starting point. And it's pretty, it's very, very fast in time, but it cannot beat timelessness. So that which is already in place is never going to be fooled by what comes later saying it's nothing. Yeah? Yeah. So here we go. Presupposing a non-existent thing. 
first of all, you're not there, so what's presupposing it? The head, yes? This fucking activity we call mental processes, yeah? So that presupposing, let's say, the non-existent thing is an existent thing, yeah? What happens? Well, the existent thing starts probably having a little bit of trouble and may want salvation for itself because it finally sees that may be the final answer. I've tried everything else, but maybe salvation is the answer I'm looking for. What's actually the answer is negation of itself, but let's go salvation for the non-existent thing instead of negating the non the existent thing and putting it in its place as a non-existent thing. This is what non-duality is. Non starts with not. What church have you gone that starts with not? Not Catholic, not Jewish, not, no. This not gonna work. <laughs> Don't waste your fucking time. No, it always has something and then onward, yeah? Because it's dealing with the seeming existing thing. It's not dealing with the existent thing as a non-existent thing, which is what non-duality starts with. Non-duality starts with the existent thing, first and foremost, isn't an existent thing. It's a non-existent thing. And actually, being ourselves reality is what we are. What? Being ourselves, which means there's no time in that. It's not like you were reality and then you somehow blew it and then you're going to become reality. It says being reality. I only think that's the only thing reality could do is being reality. It's not in time. Yeah. So being reality, ourselves, the greatest mystery is reality as ourselves wanting to attain reality. And for him to say the greatest mystery, he means something. It's an emphasis. When he's, if you read his teachings, a lot of people wrote about his teachings. <clears throat> He has certain things that are, in, are captured by all these people that write about his teachings, and they he says them differently, but sometimes they're they're presented as the problem or the greatest mystery, and that's this you should know, so to speak. You should be attentive to what's coming. Presupposing of a non-existent thing being an existent thing, yeah, and wanting to get salvation for itself, then you jump into the realm of time right now. Now, in this, your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. What are they reinforcing the non-existent thing to be? Uh, an existent thing. Yeah. How can they destroy it? It's, a, it's not, it's not uh, Alberger, whatever it is. That, what's the hard math? Whatever math it is. Yeah. It's simple. Simple. Yeah. There's a presupposing the head is doing this, yeah, that the non-existent thing is an existent thing. And then everything starts from that premise. Yeah. So whatever you meet or deal with isn't about this, it's as this. So this gets established, and now you have a world of problem solution for this, which is this is what needs to be looked at. Not all the ways it looks at shit, but look at that. So he basically presents, he says, hey, you basically, this is happening. The non-existent thing is taken to be an existent thing. And now we're living life from that point, yes? And our spiritual practices, which we are believing is undoing something, is actually reinforcing that's something we would like it to undo. What are you going to do? How can you do, you know, if this thing, how, how are you going to destroy it? Yeah. When you're, you're reinforcing it, the course of miracles says the same thing in a way it says, Hey, you're actively denying. If you talk to anyone during the day and you catch them in a minute, you go, you know, you know, you're actively denying what you are. No, fucking, you know what I mean? There's just no idea. But if you describe the condition they may be in, which is, firm in faith in this something else that your head has made to be you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, this is the movement of duality. When you're firm in faith in one thing, you're probably doing another, not doing, but another is getting done, which is an act of denial of something else. So the faith in what we're not reinforces what we're not. 
at the expense of the recognition of what we are. And the what we're not becomes our new starting point. And even when we want to get out of me, you want to be there to get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're pushing off the moment of recognition of God because you're you're getting off on the being the knower of God. That can go on for fucking ever. If you actually met God, it would probably stop the whole thing. Now here's the dog, yeah. So what are you gonna do? If you hear that and it 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 trig it it rings true, just sit with it. This is how non-duality reveals. <clears throat> It doesn't reveal its understanding. It reveals misunderstandings. <coughs> so you, you've you been wearing understanding. Hey, honey, honey, could you get Lola out? Yeah, thank you. She knows how to get out everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> she, got her in the back. she she is again. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah, she's all right. All right. So so there's the act of denial of what you are. So basically, you reinforcing you is actually an act of denial of what you are. You're not, you don't see it, but that's how it works. Yeah. And the firm and faith in this something else that you have made, that your head has made to be yourself. Yeah. Has you blind to what's looking. And therefore, we're using what's looking to look for a conceptual idea of what's looking, which is the blindness to what's looking. Yeah. So non duality is just a negation of these misunderstandings, yeah? And get to see the existent thing as a non-existent thing from existence, not from the non-existent thing. See the non-existent thing or the existent thing from the existence, not from the thing. And what will happen is you didn't know there was a huge choir but that choir is going to go off with the understanding of non-duality. When you hear, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha, you'll finally hear it as the Buddha. And it makes complete sense, yeah, that the Buddha shouldn't be wasting any time using itself to find itself, yeah? You can't use mind to seek mind, big M mind, and you can't use light to seek light. Now, Paul is using light. Paul is using mind. Paul is using Buddha to seek what? Light, mind, and Buddha. Yeah. The great news, when you tell the truth about that, you're not Paul. Instead of trying to avoid that moment, you're more Paul. When you finally let the house collapse and you think it's going to take you with it, you're going to be standing apart from it. But when you let it collapse and land all these things that you have been making or your head has been making unreal and you're super afraid of it being real you let it land and it's and let it be as real as it wants to be and it shows itself as unreal and that's you included yeah what happens i don't know find out yeah this is the point you know what happens when people try to describe what happens to them after they hear non-duality message People exclude themselves because they didn't get hit by that toaster in Walmart on Wednesday morning from, you know, and, yeah. Or I, I was just walking in a park and then suddenly, and everyone tries to go to that same park on the same fucking day. So innocently, their sharing of something caused a lot of fucking trouble because people, their head immediately excused them because they weren't in a park. Or they weren't, they didn't get hit by a toaster. It was a fucking fryer or something, yeah? Which would be much more damaging, yeah? So it's best not to say shit, really. Just invite with the message of non-duality and just find out what happens. The, basically how we describe it, where the value is, is in this event, 
is traveling lighter because the possibility as this action figure through experiences, which there are going to be many, yeah, is either heavy or light because this is a dualistic ex event. Yeah. So there's either heaviness or lightness. It's way, which way are you leaning? And I, I have humbly seen over the years, because my idea of traveling lighter at first was everything was going to go my way. And that was that got blown out of water. No, it goes the way it's going to go, but I can travel lighter with whatever life has in store for the action figure, which I don't have any idea what's in store for. It. Yeah, And that's the great certainty is the uncertainty, Yeah, which the head gets very uncomfortable with uncertainty. It will, at the expense of living, it will hold on to it, thinking it knows something when it has no fucking idea. And the only way, this isn't about moving to do anything about it. You just see it because it's not you. Yeah? <clears throat> do, am I going to... Am I going to see the spacesuit being halfway decent clean or having to bring it to the fucking, you know, the cleaner? If I don't see me as the spacesuit, I'm not looking to bring it to the fucking cleaner. Yeah. It gets to a certain point that's enough and the action figure works. It's the pressure of transcendence and always getting better has been removed. It can fart, fart in public. It can da 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 da. It's just a giant relief to get this fucking mental head off of it. Yeah. That it's, that it's you. It's the best fucking day for the body. It is. And therefore now it's no demands. You've got to trans, you know, transmute or trans whatever. It says you're going to sit on this cushion for 13 hours. <laughs> that makes no sense to it. Makes no fucking sense to it. I remember I did this sweat in. Uh, uh, I got sober. And. Of course, I wanted to get better because I had been bad. <laughs> so, yeah, I wanted to do a lot of mea culpas because there was a lot of shit on that chalkboard I wanted to erase so much. So I knew this lady, Donna, had a store in North Beach, and she says there's this thing called a sweat they're having in Mount Shasta. And why don't you come up there with me? And she was a pretty cool lady. So 10 bucks or something, 15. Thank you, honey. Thank you. All those memories take over. <laughs> so I go up there. Yeah. And I have no idea about Native American sweats or anything. I heard about it, but I had no idea. And so I get there and it just so happened. It's like the biggest sweat of the year or something in that world. And there was, they got some a guy from Oklahoma, an Indian, and they were cutting down the cedar saplings and they were building the thing. And, and then, they all knew each other. So that guy, some guy come in a big hog and he's, oh, a famous dude in the world of, you know, and everyone, all these kingpins in the native, most of them not Native American, all these kingpins in this situation. Oh, yeah, these are the big hitters. And here I am. So they built this big one. And the first day we go in there and. I had no idea what's really going on. So I, we were standing. There was too many people in there. And then suddenly they flapped and the flap went down completely black. And I tried to sit down and someone was right there. So I had to sit, stand and heat rises. So I had to stand like on a subway. And then suddenly the fucking shit started happening with the, the herbs and the water and the rocks. And there would be waves, literally, almost like you could see it. The wave, they would throw something on the rock and then this thing would go, boom, boom, and I'm getting killed, burning my underarm, my nostrils. I'm like, fucking, and I'm, but I'm, I don't want to lose my spiritual face. I know if I run out of there, I'm going to be the talk of the whole fucking event for the next three days. So I'm, I'll die before I lose my face. So <laughs> trying to sit down, knowing I couldn't go. Finally, they, open, they, they end it. I rush out there, jump in the river, and great. And then the next time I go in, I sit right next to the flap. <laughs> so a couple of years later, things have happened. And my friends who are in AA, I was like, uh, they were going to have a, a sweat in Petaluma. 
and they had a guy, another Indian from Oklahoma was going to run it. Just about 12 guys. They built the nice thing in this guy's yard and they had like a, a thing of Calistoga and juices. I didn't want to go, but I wanted to support my friends. So we go in there. The thing starts happening. I get hot and I go, it's hot. And I leave. <laughs> I leave, I go outside, beautiful night, all the food's there, cow sugar, they're moaning and praying, and I'm sitting there, oh, lovely stars. <laughs> what had happened between the first time I went and the last, and that time? Incredible. Not no, I didn't notice anything, but major things had changed, yeah? There was a clear recognition, hot, go. <laughs> it was like, hot, oh, no, just go. Because I didn't see any fucking point to it. I didn't. All the shit, all my maneuvers was trying to get somewhere. And I really realized when I heard what I, from non-duality, you ain't going anywhere. Yeah. And uh, I've been trying to get out of here since I was six, literally. To try anything, shoot coke, do this, everything. And uh, now I have come completely here through the wisdom of no escape. I can do not believe you can escape from an imaginary place. <laughs> and the only thing that wants to escape from the imaginary place is the imaginary thing. Yeah. And I've really landed here. Well, I don't know how many years ago I really actually landed here because I was always trying to get out in some form or another, spirituality, drugs, whatever, surfing, nothing right or wrong with it, but I wanted out, out, out. When I, there was just a realization and it was a being convinced and it was over. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And this is the beauty of it. This doesn't give you rocket speed. It stops you in your tracks, literally. And then you see they're not your tracks. It just hits you and it hits you again. Just like that, the heat in that room. I don't know how many you may, maybe only one. You hear it once, something may happen, but you may hit, need a couple, but something will happen. Yeah. Something will happen that never happened. It's always happening. Yeah. And you'll come to a conclusion and be brought to a clarity. And that clarity won't trigger motion or moving or accelerating or speeding anything up, it'll be very disarming. At least that's how it was with me. And I just sat there and people told me stuff like, hey, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. And I sort of got it in whatever form I did, but it did the job, yeah? And then I remember I was in India and I remember I knew I was never gonna ask another question again because I saw the futility of the answer questioning. I did. Just was like, and it was done then, just done. And then things just kept, kept happening where I believed it was like a living river and it was going to continue, but they dried up a lot of it. And then it was a trip. I thought, I always thought it would have to do with a lot of interest, but it's loss of interest blew my mind. It was loss of interest because the interest I was having was a, a, a way of reflecting the greater interest in me. It really was like the head was always looking for a reflective surface to picture itself in. And it was interested in getting those glimpses, maybe in spiritual robes, you know, instead of a fucking leather jacket as a drug addict. Yeah. But it wanted a reflection and it was, it was, it was sort of like having a mobile, you know, what's this narcissus pond. Everything I did, the meaning was given to it to throw a bigger meaning back at me as me. Yeah. So I realized that I thought meditation was way more important than doing dishes because the head was getting a big reflection of itself. And I saw once my head heard about meditation, if I had never done it before, the day I started, it had me as a meditator before I even hit the cushion. Before I ever did what they call as an act meditating, I was already seen as the meditator. And I saw it clear as fucking day. And I didn't think this was an unusual thing. It opened me up to see the, the first movement of the mental activity, which is the claim, what actually is happening. 
And it's not you doing the claiming. It's mechanical. It's mechanical. Conscious contact triggers it to come on, and then it claims the conscious contact and makes us unconscious to the consciousness, really. And now we become super self-conscious, but not to consciousness. Self-conscious as a, a head and a body. Yeah. So here we are, a beautiful day. This is a, this, you can invite every day, you can invite. This is not a thesis or anything. It's an invitation. And basically, we're at the dinner. You just, you may be just facing the other way. So you're smelling the food from here, thinking it's coming from here, but it's already out. You don't even have to move. The chair, you don't move. The chair will turn around. The chair will be turned around and you'll see the food. You'll see the day. you see the moment. And you'll respond, you'll respond in kind. Yeah. It has nothing. You don't turn. No, we don't want you to fucking turn. Stay just like you are. Something's going to turn it. And then, but, <laughs> you mean I was here all along? Yeah, you are. What's the, what's, how do they, re how do they receive you on having never left, really? All your arrivals are going to fail to bring you to the success of on having never left. Isn't that beautiful? So that which, man, I spent so much money going to that retreat and this and that, great. Because it's going to hit a point where you're going to see through all that stuff and it's going to be the greatest success brought about by its failure. Yeah, because... It would be a failure if you weren't what you're looking for. But non-duality says you are what you're looking for. And therefore, the failure to find it, the failure to get it, the failure to stabilize it is the success because you are that which is already stabilized. You are that which is already here. Yeah? It's got to be that or nothing. Non-duality isn't saying you have to do fucking anything. Is questioning the whole premise of a doer. And then people, it's weird. I, man, if you wanted to make money in this business, do not bring up personal doership if you first start it. Because people are going to get very squirmy and you're going to leave before they give you any donations. Yeah? It really, because it hits the biggest point of the head. The head's whole premise of this being your story is that you're the doer of it. We have it in recovery. It is so fucking stubborn that people, after living years and years, being driven from some other force to do shit that they would never have come up with on their own, always completely blind to them not have, being the owner of it, get sober, and after a week or two, have great gratitude for something that's doing for them that they can't do for themselves. So the ability to do it is there, but it's blocked when it comes to looking at the lower power. All the shit that went down, you believe you were the doer of. All the good shit that's happening now, you're not the doer of. That's not fucking kosher. There's something off there. Yeah? And I don't believe your boat is tilted. I think there's a fucking uh, a passenger on your boat that ain't you. I do. I believe there's a mental activity. And in this place, mental activity, thank you, honey. Mental activity has a lot of, hey, weight. You can't see it. You can't put it on a scale, but it weighs more than fucking heavy buildings. People can fucking weigh themselves down completely in a day by making mountains out of molehills. You can't weigh that mental weight or emotional weight. No one knows how to put it on a scale. They can't use it in a in a judicial system. Yeah? Someone can fucking drive someone crazy for a year, two years, and then driven and the person does something. And when the when the law starts and the court start, is that that day where they bit the person? So the year or two of abuse, they can't weigh. Doesn't mean shit in the in a courtroom. Yeah. But if you did something. 
fucking yeah. But all the fucking psychological shit. Look at it in the in the history of people at war. Every person who got shell shot a long time ago was seen as incredible cowards because they weren't bleeding, there wasn't blood gushing. So there's fucking there was no weight being given to emotional, mental conditions. Where is it's the weightiest fucking condition here? And the lightest condition is the spirit condition. It can hold any weight and neutralize the weight. Yeah. But the head is the heaviest fucking thing going on, and no one can gauge it or fucking take its temperature. You can't. And people psych, you know, they're making shit up, diseases constantly. The head is constantly going off, and there's no scale, no let's measure it or weigh it. You can't. Yes. We only see things, the weight of fucking things. Yeah. So, but man, you can come to know. And when, when you come to know, you knew it already. You did. When you come to know this shit, it's not going to be new. It's going to give you like an old aha that had been muted or dis, uh, distracted from. But now it's like a it's like an echo that's very loud. Nothing generates it. It's just on. Yeah. No, no, no. yeah. To me, it's the last answer in time, which is a great answer because it takes away any need for any more answers concerning this seeming very important topic of spirituality or whatever. Yeah. You're just at the end of the road or at the beginning and you just don't go on the road. Yeah, it's awesome. So. Yeah. Any questions here? Any questions? Uh, Kathleen, anyone? Hands up. I have kind of a follow up, if you don't mind. No, yeah, go ahead. Uh, um, you you mentioned. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> blindness. Um, and uh, I was pondering blind spots today it seems to me kind of the essence of what can cause us problems or cause problems for other people is uh what you call blind spots but i mean i don't think you what you really have to worry about blind spots plural it's it's, it's there's just one blind spot right which is <laughs> well the beautiful the, the, thing is you don't have the blind spot yeah <laughs> There's no one to have the blind spot. You don't have the blind spot. Something has a blind spot. It's not yours. Yeah. So you come to us. If it was yours, you would never come to accept it. But because it's not yours, you come to accept it. You come to accept a lot of shit that was intolerable to you as the you before. Yeah. That only demanded more oomph, more this and that. You just done with it because you see this is a built-in blind spot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, I never really, since I was six or seven, I hadn't breathed an atmosphere of acceptance, I don't think, for a long, long time. And it was like getting an oxygen tank when it started to happen. And that happened with seeing the action figure as an urban renewal project and it got canceled. Yes. Yeah, it's wanting to reach 30 feet. I was going to accept it reaches seven. Is that some, you know, you know what I mean? Because I remember I did a talk outside of Boston and a guy had been at some place and they said, if you hold this posture for 16 minutes, something's going to happen. And the guy couldn't do it. And so he says, well, what should I have done? I should, you should have held it for 17 minutes. You know what I mean? It's just going to be more time added on and on just goes on and on. Yeah, doesn't it? I mean, it's all right, but it goes on and on. Yeah, Don't you see it? it there's got to be... Uh, this is how we present it clinically. Mental activity goes on in time. Yes? Time. Yet timelessness or something is already here. 
and you know this is a construct because when you're at a work, it day may go super slow. When you're surfing, it goes really fast. So obviously, time doesn't have like gears and just goes, you know, it's us. Yeah. The way we see things make it go fast, slow, whatever. Yep. Oh, where was I? I was going now. Huh? Eh? Oh, yeah. So the timelessness. So this is one thing. This is why uh, we started calling it selfing, first of all. There's a lot of things, but selfing, because when you listen to the head, you're not becoming a self. You already are one. The head starts under a huge assumption that you already are a thing. It does. So it doesn't give you a chance. Oh, I don't want to be a self today. No, you are one. And then and then you live with, I don't want to be a self today, but as a self. Yes. So here, timelessness, mental activity, let's call it conscious contact before the mental activity. I, uh, our friend talked about consciousness. So consciousness is in contact, triggers the event of this whole place. Something arises in that contact, but it's of time. It wasn't right at the moment of contact. It comes after the moment of contact. That's the mental claiming <coughs> of the contact. And the mental claiming of the contact is, in, is an interpretation, as they say in The Course of Miracle, the brain interprets to the body of what is a part. So conscious contact, Contact produces a data. The data comes through the brain. The brain translates it to, to infer or pertain to the body. There you go. Happens pretty fast, very fast. Usually catches us completely by surprise because we're not living much surprise anymore. We got this idea of knowing. But yeah, so here's the claiming mental process. And then... Okay, the mental processes of selfie. So what's assumed when there's the claiming of a doing is that there's a doer that's doing it, yeah? So there's a doing, that doing gets claimed by the mental state to imply there's a doer doing it. And not only that, it brings a huge amount of time into it. It says every time you're triggered to be a doer, you feel like a historical doer, which is amazing. So the momentary doing is is used to make a historical doer or trigger that. That's insane, eh? It really is. Time is a huge part of the magic trick. Huge. Huge. That's where the weight comes from. Yeah? If you were the doer of this little thing, like looking at the dog, no big deal. Yeah? And then you'd run into, like, one thing that was very bad at that moment. You could probably get over but when I'm looking at the, the dog, the head says, I've been looking at a lot of fucking things for years and years and years. Yeah. So I am locked in as the looker. I'm locked in as the doer. There's no wiggle room in it. See, this is the beauty of it. I don't believe you can get out of it as it. I don't. I just do not believe it. I do. I believe you're not in it as you. I do not believe you can get out of it as it. I, do, I believe humbly, like we say in recovery, self can't get out of self. So if the system, if you're living from the system, one of the parts of the system is wanting to get out of the system, which is a huge part of the fucking system. You ever see that movie uh, Matrix? I think it was the second or third part where he meets the architect, one of the, of the main frame of the whole thing, and uh, he comes into a... a don't hold me to the accuracy of what I'm saying. I'm just using it for an example. But Neo looking pretty good with the Ray-Bans, long leather jackets, very tailored, like Italian tailor. Looked like, yeah, really cool. Comes in, there's this older dude sitting there, and there's these little small TVs all over the walls with Neo in uh, action figure mode, you know, kicking Smith, Agent Smith or whatever. Yeah. And so the guy goes, oh, Neo says, oh, ho, 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 Neo. Oh, Neo. And then he goes, oh, yeah, Neo, uh, you're the savior or something. Oh, yeah. You're about the seventh savior. 
what? I thought I was the one. No, there's been about seven ones. At first, it was like an aberration in the programming, but it got sucked in and it's part of the programming now. So you're not basically saying you're no threat whatsoever. Your idea of freedom is still in the bondage of the system. So this is what I feel. I don't feel if you're in, you can't truly get out. But the point is, you're not in. Or well, that which is in is not you. That works. And that, to me, that's the logic of non-duality, and it's seamless. If you get a fate taste of it, you're going to get more free samples of it. Yeah, you get a taste of that little, like, German Shepherd way of looking at things, you're going to get a lot of that fed. Yeah, and it's going to bring you to some conclusions. Yeah, yeah so that blew my mind. So this thing... The claiming happens, and I believe most things that we do here are processes. And I believe that's the quickest process I've seen, the claiming of the doing as a doer and pictured as a body. It happens less than a half a second in the brain, pretty quick. I humbly believe that a process after it can't beat it. So if that process st standardizes the idea of a you that you now will infect all the other processes that come after it and the process that come after it are not going to affect that infection because the the first process injects what comes after it that which comes after it does not neutralize the first that to me was incredible to see yeah so the pointlessness or the futility of fighting what in a sense your picture has already lost is pointless to me. So maybe doing nothing is the way because everything that is be is something you're doing is being used to imply the doer. So maybe take a break, especially on the special shit that seems so important to be doing and maybe go to thrift stores and read Yankee blogs. You know, do garage sales. I don't know. You'll find your little way. You know, I like that guy. What's his name? Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, great actor. Now he makes shoes in Ireland. Not bad. He's an artisan. He makes shoes. Fantastic. He's probably having a great time. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Anyone there have a question? No one has a question here? They're wondering if they're going to have a coffee here today. Yes, you are, if you want some. Anyone? No? So I'm going to no, say... No hands up, Paul. I don't see any gonna, hands up. I'm going to say anybody. goodbye then. Yeah, so let me uh, look at the murderer's row here. All right, hold on. Yes, Lola, there they are. Yeah, it's always nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, maybe we can pass the basket with your hat here. Oh, no, Mia. Yeah, Mia, the hat. But hey... Let me say goodbye to here. Kathleen, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. My clock. Thank you, Paul. Is, yes. Eric, thank you. Eric, that point is so important, I feel. That point, because I must have been in that loop for years as an action figure, hearing something that I felt I should be accessing and not seemingly accessing it motivated me to do a lot of shit. And the other way it got answered was, I'm not that which needs to access love. And maybe I'm at the point of love. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kerry. Axel. Dennis W. Hey, thank you, everyone. You know, it's us sitting here. Uh, you have to admit there's some power in these meetings, yeah? Yeah. We call it in AA the loving presence expressing itself through our group conscience. That's a pretty good description of satsang. They do. All right. Axel Dennis W. Rico Cruz. I'm happy you're back, Rico. Yep. Yeah. Marl in uh, California. Dana. 
honesty, whatever she's doing now. Vlad in Portugal. Vlad, there's Mia, there's Chris, there's Vlad. Noah, Vlad. there's everyone. <laughs> nice to see you, Vlad, as always. Yeah, all's well. Good. Uh, we've got Mika, Mika from Finland, Rick Rowe, Toronto, Terry from Camarillo, Lori, nice to see you, Jamie and Barbara, Andre, Tomas in Poland, nice to see Tomas, thank you for everything, William Stamps, Zoe, Japan, yes, we'll get you sushi one day, honey, yeah, when you come back, yes, John, Florida, Muchi. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Steve, San Diego. Nice to see you, Steve. Nice background. Paul, well, thank you. Darren. Uh, let me see. Phone numbers. Jewels on vocals. I like that. Fletch. iPhone. Holly. Uh, John. Roman Mueller. There's Mia. Chris. <laughs> Everyone and Barbara. Barbara. Are you single? Uh, we've got Abhishek, David Bitterman, Javi. Hey, David, call me up this week and before we go. Absolutely, Paul. Yeah, I'm at work right now. I was going to call you today. It's a little noisy to hear that. Yeah, later we'll on. Soon. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. John K., as always, always a pleasure to see everyone. Hey, thanks so much. We will be here. Uh, remember, Tuesday and Thursday, there's no meetings coming up. There will be a meeting on a Wednesday night and a Saturday meeting. Ten bucks. Anything. Fifteen, whatever. Ten. Ten. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Thank you, Paul. Yes. Paul.